we haven't seen the kind of impact that some other consumer uh, uh, products businesses are. We we've, we've become a staple, so people are buying cannabis whether or not there's inflation. However, they're changing their patterns of buying. So instead of coming in once a month and buying a lot, they're coming in paycheck to paycheck. And so we've seen a small decrease in the basket sizes, but for the most part, our, our customers are continuing to come back. So cannabis is now a consumer staple. I think it is. That's uh, that's what we're seeing now with the uh, resi- results during this difficult uh, inflationary period. It is difficult. And some feel that, I know you've said, you think we're in a recession now, Many feel we are going into one. Is cannabis recession proof? Well, it's early to tell. This is uh, the first re- global recession that we've seen, and it's the first time cannabis as an industry is going through that recession right period. So it would be ill advised for me to make a prediction at this point in time. But we are encouraged by the results we're seeing. We're continuing to grow 15 to 25 uh, percent on last year's numbers. And I think that's a pretty good uh, sign given the environment we're in. Do you still feel we are in a recession? Oh, we're very much in a recession. I, I think we've been in a recession for two quarters, at least the way I learned in business school what a recession is. Um, and uh, I expect that this quarter and next quarter will continue to contract given the uh, hikes in interest rates. When do you think things turn? I think once we see a peaking of the inf- of inflation, we saw it come in a little bit hotter than we expected today. Uh, I think that we're probably coming near a high on inflation given the moves that are going to be made over the next two months with uh, with the Fed. I suspect We've seen the high, but sometimes it takes a long time to start seeing a reduction in inflation. So we'll have to see how long that takes. All right, let's talk about the legislative environment. It's been really a mess. There was some optimism with the Biden administration. It went away quickly. Um, What is your optimism of federal legislation or even safe banking? Any progress at all on the federal level? I, I think we're closer today than we've ever been on getting safe banking passed. I think that we have close to 80 votes if it was pure safe. Um, in the Senate, I think that with some of the social justice issues, we're probably closer to a 60 number, 60, 65 uh, in the Senate. So I think we've got the votes to pass. It depends on timing at this point in time. Do they have enough time, one, to try to get it in before the uh, uh, midterms? I suspect not. I suspect it's going to be attached to another bill during the lame duck session, and then we'll see how it goes. But I'm fairly optimistic at the moment that we will get safe. The other market that everyone's talking about right now is, of course, California, which looks like a debacle. Many thought it would be the building block, the foundation of federal cannabis. It's been anything but. Are you able to put your finger on what went wrong or is there just too many things? The problem is that what we've seen is in democratically controlled states around the country, there's very little enforcement of the illicit market. And it's the illicit market that's the problem. The illicit market doesn't pay tax, doesn't regulate their products, uh, isn't safe. And yet the, the regulators are not touching that market at this point in time. And that's where the real problem is. It's not with demand. Demand is very strong. It's with the illicit market, mainly in California, Oregon, Colorado, Washington State. Some say it's 10 times the size of the legal market in California. I, I suspect that it is, yeah. And will it ever work as a recreational market? I, I think that if the regulators, once we, I think the recession in many ways in the United States is going to help the cannabis industry be, it's going to refocus these state governments on taxes. They need to collect taxes. You can't collect taxes if you're not enforcing the illicit market. The industry just can't survive. And so I think you're going to start seeing over the next six months a new emphasis on, on, on tax revenues. Um, because you remember a year and a half ago, the Biden administration passed the $1.3 trillion package, which bailed out all of the states and their deficits. Now that money's coming to an end, and they're going to need tax revenues. And tax revenue from an industry this big can't come in unless they regulate the illicit market. And so I'm hopeful over the next 12 months, we're going to see more and more regulation of the illicit market. What new markets do you have your eyes on coming online over the next year or two? So in the United States, obviously, we're all waiting for New York and Connecticut to come online next year. We still think that's going to happen, although there's some issues, particularly in New York, that we need to work through. Uh, Cura Leaf and myself are actually going to be meeting with the regulators at the end of this month to have those conversations. Uh, and of course, for Cura Leaf, specifically Europe, we are I'm spending probably 60% of my time right now in Europe physically uh, working on our development of our business there. We want to make sure we're ready when Germany presses the button on adult use in 2024. CureLeaf wants to be the dominant player in that market. So, How big is that market, Germany? Five to six billion over five years. Enormous. Are, Are you concerned about the likelihood that they face a very deep recession? Yes. 
Europe is going to be facing the hardest recession, in my opinion, since the 1920s this winter.